bitches in the back. Or stock is attached. Daddy's mad at black. Got the bushes black and match. Riding on a horse. Hello, welcome to JCC Arduino Tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at the basics of Arduino Tutorial. The Arduino board is made up of two sides. We have the hardware and the software side. And today we're going to be looking more into the hardware before we go into the software side. The Arduino board, which is having Atmega 3 to 8 as the heart of the whole board, has some specifications. When you look at the Atmega 3 to 8, it's a high performance 8 bit microcontroller, which also sometimes is being referred to as a microcomputer. And as a microcomputer, it have a RAM and with this particular RAM is having a program RAM. The program RAM is having 32 kilobytes of memory which means that you can upload your data, your sketches, your program to it up to 32 kilobytes. It must not exceed 32 kilobytes and aside that too it's having the SRAM which means static random access memory. With this particular RAM it exhibits retentivity or it's volatile which means that it eventually loses data when it, it's not powered or when it loses power. Moving from that place, we also look at the mode of communication, how the Arduino board communicates with other forms of devices and including your computer and sensors. It communicates, it has three modes of communication. The first mode of communication that we're going to look at is the UART. The UART simply refers to universal asynchronous reception transmission. With this particular mode of communication, it, is, it, it makes use of digital pin 0 and digital pin 1. With the digital pin 0, it uses it to receive data from other devices or modules connected to it. And with digital pin 1, it also uses it to send out data or other forms of information through digital pin 1. So we have uh, digital pin 0 being referred to as serial pin 0 and digital pin 1 also refers to as serial transmit. Yeah. And uh, moving on from that place, we're going to look at how it also communicates with our computers. It's also used this mode of communication, this mode of communication protocol to communicate. That means between your Arduino and your computer, it uses, still uses the UART. And that is being enabled by the second microcontroller on board. We're going to be looking at the Arduino Uno. That is going to be the standard that we're going to be using for this particular beginner lesson. On board here, we have the Atmega 3 to 8. Aside that, too, we have another microcontroller, which is not the hat of the microcontroller, but it's also helping make uh, established connection between your Arduino and the PC. So with the Atmega 16, it's serving as a USB to serial converter. It is what also enables communication between your computer and the Arduino board. It is also a microcontroller on its own, but in this case, it has been purposed for a particular function, unlike the Atmega 3 to 8. So with this particular one, it's also a high performance, 8-bit microcontroller, but in this case, it has been limited to play a role as a USB to serial converter. From that place, we're going to also move on to the SPI. The SPI is referring to Serial Peripheral Interface. This Serial Peripheral Interface is faster compared to the I2C, which is Inter-Integrated Circuit. It only accepts four modules or four devices connected to it. So you can connect four devices or modules connected to it. And here we only need one master. It only works with one master and it's fast due to its way that it work. It's having the clock, it's having master out, master a slave in and master in and slave out. Those are the pins that it's having. So you can see that some of the modules are having this particular thing. That means if you haven't if you want to communicate using this kind of communication protocol you only you are limited to only four modules or devices. Moving on from that particular place to we will have a look at the I2C. With the I2C, it gives you the enablement to connect up to 128 modules to your Arduino. And with this particular mode of communication, 
due to the nature of it, you are able to connect a lot of modules to it. But aside that, too, it's very slow as compared to the I uh, SPI due to the nature of connection. And I'm going to show you a particular way that you can connect to the module. And with the with this particular mode of connection to, you could connect multiple masters and multiple slaves to it. And this is how simply the connection is done. You could connect a lot of I2C modules, for instance, the LCDs that we have, and which is the 16 by two LCD, we have a uh, 20 by four LCD. With all these modules that we have, you could connect them through I2C using only two lines. The first line will be used for data and the second line is also used for clock. With one thing about this, it's just low, but aside that, it is one of the best mode of communication because since it allows you to connect a lot of modules, for instance, if you're building a robot where you have to connect the obstacle sensor, the all, all, all sort of sensors, this is the best to use for it. Now, let's look at the Arduino board in view itself. With the Arduino board, it's having a USB Type B. This USB Type B it's, uh, is the interface that you have to connect your USB ports to to connect to your PC. So it's where you establish communication between the Arduino and your computer. Aside that, right beside it, you could see a push button. Where this particular push button is the reset button. For instance, when your your Arduino is not function as expected as you wrote in the program, you could press that place for it to restart. Then your program would work, provided your code is everything is perfect and it worked for the first time. Probably as it was working, it suddenly started to uh, malfunctioning. So you just press the reset button to bring it back. But aside that too. On the power rail on the other side, we are, we are having a reset pin there. So you could also build your own push button to trigger the reset pin. Also, and it's very important when uploading the program to the Atmega 3 to 8, always to make use of the reset pin there. Looking at the other side, you can see some golden resistor right beside the USB Type B. What it indicates is that is original Arduino. In the market, we have the original Arduino, we have the clone Arduino, which is coming from different different countries, but the original Arduino is coming from Italy. They say it's made with lava. <laughs> we have to agree with them for this moment. It says it's made with lava. So with this particular one, this is how to identify it. With the gold inside, you get use that place to identify the origin of the Arduino board, which is from Italy, and also it's original. Let's have a look at how the clone is the clone looks like. With the clone, usually it comes with a small IC which have been soldered on board, which means that with this particular IC when it gets damaged, you can't use the whole board again. You have to put the whole board aside. But when it comes to the original Arduino, it's having the Atmega with this particular IC on board that you could take it out when you want to, when the board is, when the IC is damaged, you could remove only that and replace the IC or maybe you want to replace the board you can remove your IC and change it with a different board so it is a good feature that this particular one is having for instance you want to program a device and you don't want to use the whole Arduino board you, you are free to remove the IC there so that's one advantage of using the original Arduino board but aside that they all function the same way the Atmega Three to eight, which is that you know, Uno, both clone and the original functions the same way. They all have on board an eight-bit microcontroller, which does the same work. Does the same perfect work as I have here the clone, and I also have here the original. Sometimes I use this over this, depending on the situation. I choose to use any one, but they all function the same way. It doesn't mean that this is clone, so it does not really work well. They are all perfect. Any one that you have. You, you can use it for your work. But aside that, there is one advantage that the original Arduino board is having over the clone Arduino board. With the original Arduino board, it's having an IC, which is the Atmega 16. The Atmega 16, as I explained earlier, helps in com um, interfacing your computer and your Arduino board. With the clone 
Arduino board. It's having CH34 IC on board there. So with this particular one, without you downloading the driver and installing it on your PC, there is no way your you can upload with Arduino ID as sketch to this particular clone board. So you've got to I'll send a link down there so that you could also download the driver provided you're using this particular Arduino board. You need that particular driver in order for your PC to identify such a board to make it work perfectly. Now let's go back to our Arduino board. With Arduino, with Arduino board is having 13 digital pins counting from zero. We already know that pin zero and pin one are serial pins which are used to communicate to other forms of modules and devices. And moving further from that place, we have specified pins among among the 13 pins that, that, that have special functions. Something like pin 11, 10, 9, 6, 5, and 3. They are the pulse width modulation pins. They kind of work a bit close to the analog pins that you have. So for instance, if you want to uh, program an LED to fade in and out, you could use this particular digital pins. They have these special functions that are used for this uh, kind of a different purpose. But aside that, digital pin 13, digital pin 8, 7, 4, 2, those ones, they just deliver a voltage of 5 volts or 0 volts. They can't deliver a voltage in between 0 and 5 volts. They are not capable of doing that. But when you use the, uh, the pulse weight modulation pins, they are capable of doing that. And there is one good thing about this Arduino board, uh, including the clone also. They have an onboard LED connected to digital pin 13. So as a beginner, you would have to know how to program an LED just to blink like the trap gator or the pilot lamp on most of the towers, uh, the telecom towers around, just to create that kind of blinking effect. Without an LED, you can use only the Arduino boards to simulate that. You just write your program, upload it to it, and assign it to digital pin 13. And on board here, we have the LED that blinks with digital pin 13. And also, we have the digital pin 0 and digital pin 1 also connected to an LED on board. So, for instance, if you're transmitting uh, a program from your IDE to the board, you could see those two places blinking. When the Arduino is receiving data from your PC, you see the RX, pin, uh, RX LED blink. And also, when your Arduino is sending back data to your computer, you see the TX LED blink on board which could you could also use as a form of debugging to see that if the communication you're establishing between both devices are working that's one way you can also use aside that too we have the crystals on board since we have two microcontrollers on board it is uh, obvious that we should also have two crystals on board so we have the 16 megahertz crystals too on board and we, we have some pins down here with this particular pins it's also used to program our Atmega to a 328. For instance, if you write a program and you turn this particular Arduino board into a keyboard or a mouse, you, you kind of build keypads attached to it and use this one as the hat of the keyboard to your machine. So anytime you connect it to your computer, your computer is going to recognize it as a keyboard, which means that you can use the Arduino ID to just program this particular one in more because anytime connected to your computer it just recognizes it as a keyboard so what you got to do is to program your Arduino from this particular place unless you reset your uh, microcontroller to work as a normal microcontroller that is ready to accept any code from your Arduino IDE okay so uh, that is uh, that's what we're going to look uh, at the Arduino board. That's what we've got to know about the Arduino board for now. And if there are any other things that we've got to look about, I'm, I'm going to just tell you later onwards. So from now, we're going to learn more about the Arduino IDE.